Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Manish Karya. I'm the VP of Product Management at Romeo. Uh, today, I'll uh, show you a very exciting new security technology which has the potential of making us defend against this increasing rate of cyber attacks which we have been seeing pretty much for the last two years. So just a brief overview of the company. Uh, we were founded by the same team which built the Zen hypervisor. Zen, as you know, powers most of the cloud computing infrastructure today. Amazon, Rackspace, everything runs on Zen. Uh, same team, very skilled virtualization background. We also have some of the big security people. Uh, the former head of McAfee's Worldwide Threat Research is our chief security architect. Uh, Premier VCs, Anderson Horowitz, Intel Capital. So what is the problem which Brovim is trying to solve? The issue is, if you look at the headlines over the last two, three years, you will see that almost every other company is getting compromised. Attackers are getting in, stealing intellectual property and walking out. And the question to ask is why is it happening? And the reason is, what people have realized is that the end user, people like me, you, we are the weakest link in security. You know, every time you as a user, you go to a click on a link, open a, a document from your email, you're effectively executing a program written by someone else on your device. Now, it's, whether it's a piece of Java code in a website or it's a embedded content in a PDF, but it's a threat. And what's happened is that attackers have realized this. So, for example, this is how RSA got compromised, which is one of the biggest security firms. Uh, an email went out uh, to thousands of employees and one person clicked on it. And you know, this is human nature. I mean, people have to open resumes, people have to do contracts, people have to go to websites to get their work done. And attackers are exploiting that very human nature to get into the enterprise, steal data, and get out with it. So the question to ask is that, you know, we have been spending millions of dollars on security. Why is this happening? Why can attackers come in, get into our infrastructure, take the data out, and why are those products not working? And the fundamental reason is, if you look at our existing security technologies, whether it's antivirus solutions, firewalls, any kind of a security infrastructure we use today, it's all based on the concept of detection. What that means is that, let us try to find the bad guy, the bad website, the bad piece file, the bad malware, either through a signature, a pattern, a behavior, something we have seen before, right, and block it. Now, obviously, that works with like run-of-the-mill malware or malware which you have seen before. But when you are dealing with people like nation states, you are dealing with you know people who have like a lot of resources. It's cybercrime, you know, organized crime. They are creating malware which no one has seen before. Whether that's zero-day exploits, polymorphic malware, malware which there is no signature for, right? So fundamentally, targeted attacks, which are attacks targeted at a particular enterprise aimed at getting billions of dollars of IP is pretty much like a military operation. It's planned, it's executed with that kind of diligence and the malware used has not been seen before. So if you're just using your existing security solutions which are based on detection, well that's not going to work. And then you have whitelisting type approaches where you say here are the only applications which will allow to run in our environment. Unfortunately, those are the apps which lead to the security compromises. You know, your browsers, your office suite, your PDF, Java, everything is whitelisted. Those are the where the attacks are. So the question to ask is, how does Bromium solve this problem? So what we are doing is approaching this problem from a completely different direction. Rather than trying to protect you through detection, which we know is not a practical approach if you have a targeted adversary, our approach is to protect you through isolation. Now this is a very powerful yet simple concept. Imagine you as a user. Every time you go to a website, click on a link, you open a document from your email, you know, we let you do that because you as a user want to do that, but we isolate the execution of that website, that document, at the hardware layer from your underlying system. And in a way such that even if that document had a, or that web page had a zero day exploit targeting your system, it cannot do anything because it has been isolated at the hardware layer. And how do we do that? We use virtualization in a very different way to accomplish this goal. So what we have done is build this new technology called micro virtualization. And what this technology does is it uses inbuilt virtualization capabilities which are present in the hardware, uh, which are, by the way, the same things which are used by Amazon in its cloud to securely host millions of virtual machines without one virtual machine going and stealing data from another virtual machine. The same APIs are present in all your desktops, workstations, and now in your tablets and phones. We use those APIs for a very different reason. What we do with them is 
We use them to isolate the execution of individual tasks within the operating system. And what we mean by task is like going to Facebook is a task, going to CNN is a different task, opening a PDF file from your Outlook is a task, and opening this video which your friend shared with you on Dropbox is a task. Right? Anything which a user does where he's interacting with content coming from the outside, we isolate it in real time. Here's how the product works. You install a piece of software on your system, whether it's uh, you know Windows, Mac, you install it, and your system is pretty much working normally. Now let's say you as a user, you go to a website. What we do is we create this very lightweight container called a micro VM, and the entire content of that website is in that micro VM. Every website you go to is in its own micro VM. Every document you click on is its own micro VM. We can literally create hundreds of these micro VMs in an instant. I'll show you the demo. But the key idea here is imagine of this as you know you are you're basically in that micro VM, the only thing running is that website. So none of your corporate files are present in it, no corporate data, no credentials, no access to corporate networks, right? It's empty. And now invariably you will click on something bad, which is okay, because what will get compromised is that micro VM which has nothing to steal in it. It's empty. And when you as a user you are done with that website or document, you move on those and microwaves get destroyed. So it's as if every time you go to the web, you pick up a new laptop, you browse to the web, and when you're done with that website, you throw the laptop away and never to use it again. Next time when you went to another website or the same website, you pick the new one. So you're constantly you know, using these microwaves to isolate malware. Now let's see the system working because this is the most effective in a demo. So this is my system and you can see I have Romium running here. It's a piece of software. Here's my browser. You will notice I have several websites open here. You know, again, if I wasn't giving you any commentary, this would just look like a web browser demo. And what am I showing here? Now, let me take you behind the scenes to show you what's going on. So, what's happening here is, you know, Romium is isolating each website in its own container. So, you can see here the three microbiomes running: one for New York Times, one for Yahoo, one for CNN. Now, let's say you know we go in and we say, hey, <coughs> let's click on, let's go to Google. Right, you will see a brand new micro VM got created for Google. Let's say we want to go to YouTube. A brand new micro VM gets created for YouTube. So as you as a user, you're using your web browser, you don't know anything is happening. It's completely hidden from you as a user, right? Behind the scenes, as you browse, as you go to different websites, we are seamlessly kicking in and protecting them in their own micro VMs, right? So as you can see, I logged in into LinkedIn. I'm already logged in. Everything is seamless for me as a user, but it's all running in micro VMs. So each website I open is in its different micro VM, and you can you can open hundreds of these websites literally. Similarly with documents, right? You received an email from someone, and he's asking you to open some documents. So you open this, as you can see, it opened in its own micro VM here. So this PDF document, of which by the way. We were rated as one of the cool vendors by Gartner. I just accidentally happened to open it. Um, it's, it's running in a micro VM, right? So, uh, so the point here is that you know you are isolated. Now, let's say this my, this uh, document had a zero-day exploit on it. Well, all it would do is compromise this micro VM, which has none of your data in it, no files, no secrets, no passwords, no access to your corporate networks. And when you close this document away, you know everything just goes away. So this micro VM will just get destroyed. It's as if it never existed and it will go away from your system. Right? So this is regenerative computing, so sort of in a way where you don't have to worry about what the exploit is. What, what, what am I vulnerable in? Because you are protecting through isolation. Now keep in mind, this protection travels with your device. You're sitting in Starbucks. You're traveling in a different country. You're still safe. You're running a two-month-old version of Java. You're still safe. You haven't patched your machine in three months. You're still okay. Because you are now going to the hardware layer, below the software stack. So you, some, in some sense, don't care for what's happening above. Now, this is one thing we do, which is protect you from these attacks. This is another very important thing we do, which is we also tell you when someone is trying to attack you and what are they trying to do. And the way we do that is that as these websites and documents are running in these micro VMs, we are looking at what are they trying to do. So let's say you went to Facebook, and we are seeing some some things getting installed on your system, some Windows files getting modified, a keylogger dropped in. Now, none of that is really happening on your system. It's all happening in a micro VM, but we are seeing that we know something is suspicious, right? And the reason we can do that is because remember, in a micro VM, there's only one thing running, that website or document. So everything which happens in that micro VM is attributed to it, and there is no noise. 
So in a real system, you know, when you see something happening, there are hundreds of things running. You don't know what, who caused what. In a micro VM, we know exactly, you went to Facebook, you know, we are seeing this install, software getting installed, something is suspicious. So we capture all of that and we present it to the security team uh, to look at. So for example, this is an attack which happened a uh, couple of months ago and which was basically, uh, you know, done uh, uh, as a drive-by download. So here are some of the other attacks I, I have here and I'll show you one of them. So the one I wanted to show is from uh, NBC. <coughs> Let's see if I do right. February, yeah. So NBC was compromised in February, where basically anyone who went to that website uh, to read news, and you were running Java, you got compromised without you knowing about it, and your machine was zoned. So we actually went in Bromium to this at that time, because the first thing we do is when we hear about an attack, we go there. So here's what we found, right? The user went to NBC, the first thing you can see is Java getting invoked, which you will see here. At this point, you can see malware getting downloaded and run on the machine. This was all happening behind the scenes. The user does not know anything. As you can see, it's a very complicated attack. They're installing numerous software on the machine and look at the network traffic they capture. You know, this is entire thing, what was happening was actually happening in a micro -beam. Obviously, the attacker did not know that. We capture all of that, send it to the security teams. They use that intelligence to defend their enterprise better by doing defense in depth, right? They add rules to block this attack from affecting other users. So that's the other key piece thing we do. We not only protect you, but also we give you intelligence on who's attacking you and what are they trying to do. So coming back to our sort of key, key thing, the most important thing to remember here is that, you know, what we are doing is giving you a security technology, which for the first time is not playing that cat and mouse game, where we are chasing and trying to say, okay, we found a new malware, let's add a signature for it. We have a fundamental architecture which protects you from the unknown attack, the unknown threat, the zero day. And so here are some of the key use cases where our customers find a lot of applicability of this unique security technology. One is, you know, laptop users. So you have employees who are going out, taking their laptops, you know, they're traveling, they're working from home. Typically, they're not protected with your network security infrastructure. Well, this protection travels with the device, a Java. So Java has had been in the limelight for the last four or five months, uh, in fact a year. And a lot of times enterprises are running older versions of Java to support some legacy app which they have. And so now you can safely do that. Uh, you know, high value targets, critical threat intelligence. And so again, we are seeing a lot of wide impact of this technology in various areas in the enterprise. And one obvious area is every month enterprises spend a huge amount of money just re-imaging employee laptops. As people get infected, they bring it in, it gets re-imaged, you know, the employees out, cannot work for four hours, IT has to back up everything, do everything. All of that is gone, because this, in this, with this technology, you really never get infected. It's all, it's all happening in a sort of a, you know, a virtual world in some sense. So with that said, you know, our goal really is to not just keep this, you know, uh, as an enterprise solution, but, you know, this is something which applies to each one of us. As we do our personal uh, banking, as we do our you know uh, interaction with the outside world, all, everything is on the internet, and we all are scared of getting compromised as well. So the solution we are building is really to make it safe for us as users to go and use the web as we want to, to not be afraid of getting compromised. And this is really helping you know you to go and use that you know all the applications you use, whether they are your personal applications, your SaaS applications, your cloud applications without having this risk of getting, you know, threatened by uh, cyber crimes or, you know, just uh, malware. So with that, I'll pause and see if there are any questions. Yes. Can you comment on hardware dependencies? Sure. So what we do is we use uh, Intel virtualization technology. So as long as you have an i3, i5, i7 processor, which was shipping since 2009, 2008, uh, you are on the right hardware. And operating systems. We support Windows and we are launching a product for Mac OS X this quarter as well. So again, the technology is very independent of an operating system because it's virtualization based. Any other questions? Yes. In that isolated machine, you download a file and save it to your hard drive. Right. Uh, at some point, does it not then infect potentially other parts of the system? Great question. So remember, as a user, you never see any of this, right? So this all is happening in the background. So let me show you. So let's go to Google and let's download a file, right? So, hey, let's 
you know, it's not the tax season, but never hurts to file taxes. So <laughs> let's let's save the file, and I'll go and save it on my downloads folder, right? So remember, as a user, you are doing what you normally do. Yeah, you click on a file, you save it, right? So now let's go to my downloads folder. Now you may be surprised what all I download, so please bear with me. But you can see this file we just downloaded, right? So you can notice the Bromium tag on it. It's kind of small. What we do is, as you download files, you know you can save them wherever you want. Persistence of data is not the problem. Whenever you execute this file, it will launch in a micro VM, right? So as a user, you download a file, you save it somewhere, you save it on Dropbox, you save it on your folder. That's fine. We tag those files that's coming from the outside, right? And we put them in, and we, we tag that information with the document. Whenever you launch those data, those files, those files open in micro VM. So basically, we end up creating new micro VMs as you go, right? So you can save your documents wherever you want. We are not getting in the middle of that workflow at all. It's not the persistence of data which is the threat. It's the execution where we isolate. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when I take this potentially infected file and attach it to an email, so I, I could potentially spread that. Yes, virus yes, you can. And that's great, right? Because we get more money than. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so what happens is, uh, to answer your question, yes, so you can. And what will happen if, if, the, if the person you're sending to has Romeo? It will again open in Brogan, right? So, so we, we preserve that metadata, right? So yes, you could share infected documents potentially and you wouldn't know about anything about it. But if you are running Bromium, you're safe. And if you're not running Bromium, well, you are exactly at the same level of security where you are today, right? So, and you should buy Bromium. <laughs> <laughs> so, so actually, just to add on to that with, for Manish, uh, the other piece that uh, we showed, which was lava, which is how we detect that this piece of this document has malicious content, we would notify you. We could potentially notify you before you sent that out to say a business partner. You wouldn't want to send a business partner a malicious content. Yeah, yeah yes, please. So in, if I browse the web a lot, I say I have 16 different Internet Explorer sessions that are hogging a lot of memory. And right. now you think these micro VMs, there's definitely some sort of memory limitation there. Right. right. So I actually anticipated that question. So I'm going to start this trip. Uh, so the reason is no, and the answer is what happens is that what we do is micro virtualization, which is extremely different from traditional notions of virtualization as we know of it, right? In micro virtualization, let's say you have a hundred of these VMs open, right? Micro VMs open. What happens is they're actually all getting mapped to the same pages in memory and desk, in in the, in, in the actual hardware. But what the way they are mapped is copy on write. Now this is a slightly very technical concept, but I'll explain it very simply. What copy on write means is as long as these hundred microvians are reading stuff, they are all going to the same pages, right? They're sharing it. But let's say one of them is malicious and it is trying to modify a DLL in Windows, right? Whatever blocks in memory, the 4K blocks, it tries to modify. Those blocks are duplicated. The modifications are sent to those duplicated blocks and they're stitched back into the view of that entity which tried to modify them. And the nutshell is the overhead of a microvian is only that which it tried to modify. Everything else is shared. So remember, now if you ran that CNN website even normally on your system, it will still try to modify those pages. So we are not trying to take away the memory utilization of that website. But we give you the same utilization because everything else is shared. The only overhead you have for micro VM is whatever pages in memory or disk you try to touch, which it anyway touch. You know, again, I can give you more details in a follow-on discussion. But you know, uh, yeah, you can open hundreds of these things. Cases where you expect interaction between uh, different VMs, such as different websites. Let's say you log into Facebook on right. in one tab, right. and then you open a different tab. That yeah, everything works on. seamlessly because what happens is inter-website communication happens through things like cookies, right. and which, which are all preserved by us. Again, you know, we are not, uh, we are not, remember, we are allowing you to persist your state. So you go to Facebook, your cookie gets dropped, right? Hey, you logged in into Facebook. That cookie is actually detained. Next time when you go to Facebook, it gets again preloaded into the new micro VM. And so whatever the web semantics are, they continue to work. Like you notice when I went to LinkedIn, I just logged back in. Yeah, so you, as a user, your browser experience is completely unchanged, you know, in terms of what you can do and what you can't do. It's really the execution of malware as droppers, which is being isolated, right? Where, where it's trying to compromise the system. Yes. So it's always a continuous battle, uh, you know, with the, uh, the people who write these malware. Right. Um, so now there's malware that's aware right. is running the virtual box. Yes. What that's a great you, question. So, excellent question. So yeah, absolutely. You know, malware writers know that you know virtualization is being used. 
The good part about this technology is every time you browse open documents, it's always going to be microvians, right? So if the malware refuses to execute, that's great. You're never going to get infected, right? So because it's running on the device, you're doing your browsing, you're in microvians. <coughs> if the malware chooses never to execute, that's fine too, right? And so yes, so we protect you even in that kind of malware. The, the key thing to keep in mind here is the attack surface. See, with any security solution, the right answer question to ask is, what does it do to my attack surface? So what happens is, in traditional operating system land, right, browser, OS, Java, Office, you're looking at 60 million lines of code. Anywhere there's a bug, that malware writer can exploit that and get into the system. It's a huge attack surface. With a hypervisor like this, what, what you do is you bring down your attack surface to the order of tens of thousands of lines of code. And what you really did is, you made it exponentially harder now to write malware. So that's what you do, you increase the cost to the attackers, right? And it's a cost game ultimately. Remember, you know, even if a nation state is targeting malware, they have 10,000 people writing malware. If you just made it 100,000 times harder to write malware, you made it exponentially harder for them to create an attack. And that's really what's happening here. You're making it very hard to compromise something. Do you name, name names for uh, states specific? Oh, I mean, we all know that. <laughs> Talk for one more. Yeah. One more question. Yes. And so, if you download a, like an installation right. file, that one installation file will get the Bromium sync with that right. icon. Right. But then that's going to essentially decompress right. any number of files. Right. Do Great. they all continue? Yes. So, we can tag the state of installers as well. It is. So, in the end, you just, you know, but, you've been using a computer for a long time, installed a lot of programs, right. eventually. Right, but, have, exactly, but imagine this scenario. Files. Right, well, see, the Bromium tags which you are seeing are actually hidden from the users, whereas they have nothing to do with them, right? So, now I'll give you the, the scenario where you're saying, let's say you're an employee of a company, right? You have this corporate laptop. You want to download a game on it, Picasso, Photo View, or whatever, right? And today what happens is either organizations will say you can do that, or they will say, you know, you can do that, and then, you know, what happens to the PC, God knows, right? Because anything can get installed on it. What this lets you do is, you install this app, we'll tag it all hidden. You won't see any tags, that fall for the demo I was showing you guys, right? So you install the app, it looks like a normal app to you. Every time you run the app, it runs in micro games, but you don't see the difference, right? And so you, it actually enables the employees to use an apps, use web in the way they want to, without risking the enterprise in any way. And it's a fundamental use of the virtualization isolation principle to do that. Does that make sense? Well, thanks a lot, everyone. I really appreciate your time. Uh,